Okay, uh, good morning and welcome, everyone. Uh, I think I am meeting you all after a long time. So uh, quite excited to get started with this new course. We had done prayer and intercession last semester, and this is the course on believers uh, authority. It's about. Uh, it's also going to be about deliverance. It's going to be about uh, demonology. Um, so um, I'm sure you know we're all going to learn a lot together. Uh, before we get into today's class, let's um, have a word of prayer. Uh, I want to request someone, anybody from class, to please lead in prayer. OK, go ahead, Prince. You can pray. Um, can we use the mic? Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day, oh Lord Father. Thank you for bringing us all uh, again together, oh Lord Father, to study and to learn, oh Lord Father. And Jesus, as we are starting our new course, oh Lord Father, um, give us your understanding. Give us your uh, help us, Lord Father. Help us uh, to understand more and uh, give us the good insight of uh, what your word tells, oh Lord Father. And help us to learn and help us to be rooted, O oh Lord Father, in everything that you are teaching us. And help us to be empowered, O oh Lord, to, uh, empowered by your word, by your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord Father. We submit our minds, we submit our understanding, we submit our hearts to you, O oh Lord Father. You come and uh, have ways, you come and take control. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Um, so this course... We will have two assignments. Uh, one will be your midterm assignment, and the last one will be your final assignment. And uh, the percentage is 50 50 50. Okay, so you have to give attention to both your uh, uh, tests, which, which will be announced. Uh, so, most probably somewhere mid February will be your first test. Okay, and I hope you all have your notes with you. I had posted it on the um, Google Classroom, plus, I think uh, you. The students here have it in print. So today, the very first lesson that we are going to have is about understanding the meaning of authority. Okay. So uh, since we are saying as believers, God has given us authority, we have to walk in authority. Uh, the key question to ask is, what is authority? Unless we understand what is authority, how can we use it? You know, how can we um, uh, really, not just for ourselves, but also to see God's purposes accomplished through the authority that he has given us? You know, how can we even serve through that authority? We wouldn't know. And so the first thing is to know the very meaning of authority. So I just want to ask us a question. Have you seen people in authority in like normal life? regular life. So can you give me some examples of people with authority? Huh? Yeah, regular, regular life. OK, a principal of a school has authority. Very good. That's a good picture. OK, superintendent of police. Wow, that's also a good picture. Yes, they carry authority. Prime Minister, wow, OK, <laughs> great. Hmm? You'll have to be louder. Chief Minister, yes, all are authority figures. Who else? <coughs> Judge? God, OK, ultimate authority. <laughs> Son of God, OK. Yeah, no problem. All correct answers. Go for it. Yeah, Holy Spirit, OK. So uh, that's fine. Here on the chat, government officials, chief secretary. Yes, these are all examples of people in authority. Now, I want to ask you, how do you know that they have authority? 
how do you know that they have authority ah uh, they'll use it but how what what makes you think that they have authority okay they have a position very nice yeah they have a position okay uh can we say influence everyone listens to them so they have an influence on people excellent how else do we know that whoever we mentioned till now they have authority okay they have the power okay so to do certain things like let's say a principal uh if they decide today is a very rainy day students cannot come to school so i'm saying it's a holiday people can stay teachers children they can stay at home but what if a child says no today is a holiday for everybody you'll be like you don't have any authority but principal has the authority and they use it okay so we are understanding there is a position there is some influence there is some power to do certain things and all this explains that there is authority which has been given so as we consider authority you know i'm going to go further okay uh, to understand authority and there are a couple of points that are given in our notes so you just follow along firstly it says that authority is generally vested on an individual so that means that authority is something which can be given so if today the principal decides that you know so and so will be the headmaster or the headmistress of a certain school they give the authority to that individual maybe till that day the person was just a teacher but from today they are a headmaster or a headmistress so in this way we recognize that <coughs> authority is and can be given now let's imagine a young man okay who goes to the police uh, services and uh, they say go for the training and all that he finishes the training and then the whatever sub inspector of police they say i give you authority you know you are also a certain kind of a police or let's say you are a traffic police from that day they assign him as a traffic police so one can be vested with authority or one can be given the authority till that day he was not a traffic cop but from today he has been vested with authority to be a traffic police so we can receive it from someone then a person who has authority has the right to influence as i already shared how let's say a principal has influence on the school if they make one decision it is going to affect the entire school same way you know you take prime minister if the prime minister makes a decision it's going to affect the entire country think about the authority in the home you have the parents parents make a decision oh we are going to shift our house it affects the family so having authority also tells us that there is an influence and that influence we'll see later on that it is limited to that circle okay so if i have authority as a parent in my family i can make decisions in my family i can't go to another family and make decision so there is a certain extent of influence which comes with that position or vested authority now the exercise of authority is not <coughs> solely dependent on the capabilities of the individual so what is the meaning of that i just gave one example of a person who is now a traffic police okay now imagine with me this traffic police is a uh, very short very thin very weak looking okay and they ask this uh, police to go and stand on a very busy road do you think 
the people who are driving their cars and bikes and all, they will listen to this traffic police or not? What do you think? They have to listen. OK. But the person doesn't look so strong. Looks very weak and. Huh? Because? Very correct. So you see, many a time, authority will not depend on our capability, but on what has been vested on us. So this traffic police can be very weak looking, but if they raise their hand and say, stop, if there are 20 cars, you know, 50 cars, 100 cars, they all have to stop because authority is beyond just the capabilities of this one individual. You know, same, whatever we are discussing will apply in our spiritual realm as well. Now, <coughs> we may look at ourselves and say, oh, I'm like this only, you know, all that. But if God has given us authority, authority is beyond uh, just, you know, normal capabilities. When we use our authority, the demonic realm has to listen. You understand? So that's how it works. So authority um, is beyond. It's not always dependent on the individual's ability. It can be beyond that. In some cases, authority is earned. Okay, What do we mean by that? Um, you can have a manager okay, in a company. Now, if you look at the history of that manager he may not have started as a manager so he may have started as a normal uh, you know worker uh, he may have been part of teams but because of his good work because of his hard work you know because of all the um, excellence that they saw in him after whatever 5 years 7 years he is now a manager so sometimes authority has to be earned you grow in that, you know, in that company or that role, it becomes better and better because of the credibility. So sometimes authority will come when we um, work hard and, you know, we earn it. Okay. So that's how authority works. <coughs> there are also what are known as realms of authority. Realms are simply boundaries. And in the spiritual, um, when we talk about uh, sp spiritual things, realms are very important. We have seen that even when it comes to prayer. So what are these realms of authority? I already said, if there is a parent, they are an authority figure in one family. They cannot go and tell another set of children what to do and what not to do. Similarly, uh, let's say I am a traffic police in India and I go traveling. You know, I go to China and I go there and I try to stop the traffic. Will it work? I'm a traffic police. What is wrong? What, what am I doing wrong? Exactly. It's not my country. It's not my territory. I'm stepping out of my territory. I'm trying to use my authority. Work. Okay. So, principal of one school tries to apply their rules on another school. Not happening. So, realms of authority. We are respected in that realm of authority. Okay. So, we have to be very clear on the realms, and it makes it easier for us to use our authority. Now, a few more things is sometimes the authority is recognized by some symbol, for example, uh, a badge, okay, a badge that you may put or, um, you know, you look at all these um, army officers, you see that their badges and you can recognize, oh, he's this level or, you know, he's a colonel, he's a... Um, different things. So these badges which are given can also help us understand uh, the level of authority that one has. 
Now, here is another very interesting point about authority, and that is <coughs> authority can be given. And we saw how um, powerful authority is. Okay, so if we have authority, you know, sometimes you have these movies, right? For uh, for one day, you become the god in the world, and then what what will you do? If you had all the powers of God, what would you do? You know, you have movies like that because authority comes with power and great influence. But authority can also go unused. So if I give, you know, just talking like, uh, um, you know, like fantasy sort of a thing, if I give you the authority, okay. Today, I give you the authority to be a, um, you know, a, a superhero, somebody like Spider-Man or, you know, Superman. What would you do? You might choose to do something good. Uh, you might choose to do something evil. Or here's the third case where you choose to do nothing. And I tell you, look, I'm giving you the powers only for one week. It's like how you get, no? It'll expire. If you don't use it, your data pack or whatever, it'll expire. So after that duration, there's no use. Because you never utilized the capacity which was given. So even in the Christian realm, we can say that, hey, I'm a believer. I have authority and all. But Maybe I don't know how to deal with demonic powers, right? And uh, I'm going through a lot of uh, battles, uh, you know, torments. And, uh, and I'm wondering, hey, Jesus died on the cross to give me a victorious life. Why is it that all along I am living a defeated life? Maybe, maybe I don't understand as a believer that I have the authority and the next thing is, I can use the authority. So as a believer, if I don't use my authority, you know, Satan can have a great time uh, tormenting and you know, oppressing and all that. And I'm never resisting it. So you see, authority is there, but authority needs to be used. If you don't utilize it, it's gone. Um, OK, so I, I'm not saying God will take it away from us, but I'm just saying um, it's of no use. OK, so we must use our authority. So why is it that uh, we want to learn about spiritual authority? We understood you know, some picture of authority we have in our minds now. But why are we trying to understand about authority? Why should a believer understand about authority? What do you think? Yeah. Yes, to pull down the strongholds. Very good. Uh, I heard something that side. Correct. So if we understand uh, the authority that we have been given, we'll be able to use it, isn't it? So yes, that is another reason why it's good to understand the believer's authority. OK. Any other reason why we want to? Yeah. Correct. So we can, um, we can fight against the powers of darkness. Uh, can I say that we can live a victorious life? OK. Because <coughs> what happens is, in this world, uh, though you know, we have been given authority. Jesus has won the victory on the cross. Satan is still going around like a roaring lion, um, waiting to devour people. Okay, And he is more than happy to cause havoc uh, in the lives of people in general and believers in particular. So if we don't resist the devil, um, you know, as I said, he will be able to subdue us. And that's not a victorious Christian life. So if I have to stand against the wicked works of the devil, I need to know 
that I have authority. How can you come? You know, you have no authority. Leave, devil. And so, for a victorious living, I must understand that I have authority. Yes, uh, Sean. Mm. Sure. So, um, Sean is saying that uh, um, we can't just say that we have the authority, right? Uh, and that uh, authority is only given to some people. Is that what you're saying? Huh? Okay. So Sean is saying we must be worthy uh, uh, of using that authority. Okay. So uh, we we will revisit this thought, Sean. Okay. So let it just be there uh, for now. So what we we've been saying so far is this is what authority means, and the reason why we are trying to understand it is so that we can live with that authority. So there are a couple of reasons which are listed in our notes here. It says to walk victoriously in our personal lives, um, to overcome and dominate demonic disturbances and disruptions, to serve and assist those around us. So we see in scripture, and um, the passage given here is from Luke chapter 13. So what happens in Luke chapter 13 is there is a lady. She is bound. Uh, by a demonic power and she's bent over okay and when jesus sees her uh, he understands that she's a daughter of abraham daughter of abraham is nothing but a jewish woman um, and why is it important that he said oh you are a daughter of abraham because god had a covenant with abraham there is a promise so jesus recognized that what Satan was doing is he was trespassing the covenant. And so he got very angry. And he said, okay, woman, thou art loosed. And the demon spirit left her. And she became straight you know, again. So what do we see here? Jesus used the authority to help others. In this case, there was a woman who was part of the covenant. Similarly, if we know our authority and we are observing in the lives of others around us, you know, some form of, um, uh, you know, work of the enemy, we can also say, hey, Satan, how can you do this in my friend's life? How can you do this in my family? How can you do this in my sibling's life? I, I will take authority against you. You, know, you have to stop this. You have to leave in the name of Jesus. So authority not only helps us be victorious but it also understanding authority also helps us to help others okay so that is the importance uh, and of course fulfill all our responsibilities here on earth <laughs> if you recall when we studied about prayer and intercession uh, we said you no know, jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom in matthew chapter 16 and then what did he say whatever you Bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What are keys? I give you the keys of the kingdom. What are keys? Authority. If I give you the keys of my house, you have the permission to get inside my house. It's I'm giving you the authority. So in the same way, what is Jesus saying? The authority of the kingdom I have given you. He's telling the believers, I've given you. Whatever you bind. So we have, how do we use our authority? Binding, losing. So when we do things like this, we're actually exercising our authority. These are all reasons why you and I must understand about spiritual authority. So we have some um, 
uh, answers here on the chat. OK, uh, so authority Okay, to resist the devil. Um, I thought someone had raised your uh, hand as well for a question. But that's all right. You can, you can just post it on the chat, and uh, we'll answer it. Fine. So we have an idea now. So these are all reasons why uh, I must understand. You know, we can be believers for many years, and we may not know about authority. Right? And that is very sad. That is very sad. Um, uh, because <coughs> then what happens is we say, oh, all the problems in my life, uh, God is doing it. So I have to accept. Okay, So many problems are there, many challenges are there. But what we end up doing is we live a defeated life because we think even the problems God is giving it to us. So I should be a good believer. I have to be a good Christian. Just go with this. Okay, bear all the Jesus bore his cross. I will bear my cross. Okay, so it's all correct, but we are missing the truth of what authority means in the word of God. Now, talking about authority, I said Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Now, is it only Jesus who gave us the authority, or um, did we get authority, you know? way before that well if we look at the book of genesis you know we read there that when god created man he created man in his own image okay so in his likeness he created us genesis 1 um you know, verses 26 27 you know that passage now when we say that we have been created in the likeness of god it means <laughs> that there are those similarities in the nature of God. Is there any other creature which was created in the likeness of God? Is there? No. So only we human beings, we have been created in the image of God. <laughs> it means we can, you know... Um, we we can have those attributes like god like we can we can love we can relate we have an identity okay so um we are able to think so many of these things but even beyond that what we realize is <coughs> that we are representatives okay okay so uh, there's a comment here. It says, we humans are created in the image of God. So that means the nature of God is something that we can, we can, um, we have, and we are also representatives. Okay, representatives is when <coughs> the actual person is not there, but they have sent someone on their behalf. Um, and you know, we've talked about this earlier as well. Let's say there is a, a, a huge, you know, international um, function, something is going on, and the prime minister is invited, but he is not able to be there. So, what does he do? He sends another minister. And so the minister takes whatever the letter or the, the permission and actually goes for that meeting. But <coughs> who is this particular minister? He's a representative. And so what we realize from the book of Genesis is God put man and woman here on the earth. When he is not here you know, in the physical form, we are the representatives. Meaning, when all other creatures see us, who should they? Who should they think of? They should think of God. Okay? The way we live, the way we do things in the world, we are representatives of God. That's the way God intended for man to be. You know, and there are other passages of scripture 
<coughs> where we read in Psalm 115 and verse 16, it says, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he gave to the sons of men. So he put us here on the earth. He made us in his likeness, in his image. We are his representatives. But he also gave us responsibility. The heavens are the Lord's. Who does the earth belong to? The sons of men. So if you have a room, I'm just uh, giving us some example here. If you have your room in your house or your hostel and your room is a mess, who should be questioned? Your parents or you? Us. Okay. The reason is if something belongs to me, I am responsible to be a good steward. And scriptures are telling us the earth, it belongs to us. And so, what is God's expectation? You are the steward. You have the responsibility. Things are going right, things are going wrong. I'm going to ask you, why is the earth the way that it is? Because you have, or I have, the capacity to make decisions, to take care of the earth. So that is God's original plan. That's how he planned in his mind and he created man and said, come on, man, I'm making you. I'm making you like me. You can think. You are my representative. You will take responsibility for the earth. So do you also see in this <coughs> that God gave man and woman authority? Of course, because he told them, right? You have to. Take care. We read in those passages, you know, the uh, um, the sea creatures, the creatures on, on the ground, uh, the birds. You subdue them. You, know, you take charge. You subdue them. And then God blessed man and woman and said, be fruitful and multiply. So what did God do? Originally, God gave authority to man. So coming back to Sean's question, you know, he said we have to be worthy of uh, authority. But you notice here, Sean, when God created a human being, it's in a sense automatic that they have the authority. You don't really need to become worthy in any way. If God created a human being, he created every human being in his own image. And so there's an automatic authority, if you want to call it that, that we all have. But here's the point. That's not the end of the story. What happened? Genesis chapter 3, the fall. Right. So <coughs> the disobedience of Adam and Eve and sin came into the world. Sin corrupted the world. Now. We are talking about authority. So we are interested in knowing only about authority. So now that man and woman have sinned, tell me what happened to the authority. OK? OK. So to uh, recognize what happened, let's go to the story of Jesus. Jesus, he was fasting for 40 days. OK? When he was fasting for 40 days, what are some of the things that Satan told him? You know, he said, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. Only if you bow down and worship me. So then we ask the question, hey, hang on. The kingdoms of this world, they belong to Adam and Eve. Who is this Satan to come and say, I will give you the kingdoms of the world? But you see, when the fall happened, when the earth was corrupted with sin, the authority shifted. You got it? The authority shifted into the hands of Satan. And that is why there's even that passage which says, the God of this world 
small g. He's not really God, but it just tells us he's carrying some authority on the earth right now because of sin. See, when we break the rules of God, the laws of God, the dynamics change, changes. And that's exactly what happened when Adam and Eve sinned. Originally, God gave 100%. Take it. I'll give you the authority. You are my representative. You have dominion. You go for it. You subdue the earth. But once sin came into the world, the authority now shifted to Satan. It was in Satan hand, Satan's hands. And so he started playing havoc in the world. You know, All kinds of works of the devil. What are works of the devil? Sickness, disease, strife, confusion, poverty. But talk about it. So many evil things which we see in the world. Who is responsible? OK. Or I mean, who is perpetrating it? It's Satan. OK, but we can, as believers, use our authority against what Satan is doing. So this is how <coughs> the authority actually shifted into the hands of Satan. But the beautiful thing is God did not allow it to remain in Satan's hands. What did Jesus do? Jesus, <coughs> he became a man. He came to the earth to pay the price for sin. Unless he did that, okay, he would not be able to, we use the word redeem. Redeem is pay the price and buy back. So Jesus, he bought back our authority. And no wonder in Matthew 16, Jesus said, don't worry, I give you the keys of the kingdom because he has the authority now and he's actually giving it to the believers. Even when you know, Jesus finally ascended, he said, all authority on heaven and earth is mine, but I'm giving it to you. You go into all the world, you make disciples of all nations, teaching them you know, everything that I have taught you um, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, we said the authority shifted into Satan's hands, but he took it back. Okay, And he gives it to the believer. Jesus has given that authority back to every believer. And now we can use the authority. Now Satan might say, how come uh, you, know, you are um, uh, using your authority? Don't you know that you lost it? when Adam and Eve sinned, but how did we get it back? <coughs> exactly. Through the Lord Jesus, we have now got our authority back. And so we can use the authority that God has given us. OK, so, so far, any thoughts, any questions? Yes, yes, Prince. Please use the mic if you can. Yeah. In Genesis, uh, we saw that uh, God gave authority and dominion to Adam and Eve. So, like we talked about, like when they sinned, uh, when fall happened, uh, the authority was uh, shifted into the hands of the devil. So it's like uh, at that time when it was shifted to hands of the devil, do do they still carry uh, authority, or it was completely taken away? Yeah. So see, I'm like uh, yeah. before starting, we uh, talked about like uh, when we have authority, it it is like uh, we we be in a place of not using it, but authority cannot be taken away. So when they uh, when fall happened, is like they still have authority, but they stopped using it, or it's completely taken away. Sure. So yeah, good question. So Prince is asking, when the fall happened, did Adam and Eve lose all the authority or did they still have? So uh, my answer would be they still had a certain level of authority. OK, because see, you can use your authority in making good decisions. So even right now, there may be um, you know, people who are unbelievers. But you, you see, sometimes they make such good decisions. 
you know uh, uh, they know how they can overcome some of these uh, bad temptations that that satan brings so what are they doing they are using the god given authority even though they are not still part of the covenant so every human being that way we still have authority and we can influence by making right choices but of course you know the the kind of authority which was required to fight the devil that we lost yeah that we lost good good question um any any other thoughts any other questions before we we move on okay so <coughs> today we've like we've understood that originally god gave human beings authority but we lost it because of sin but um again the lord jesus through his redemptive work on the cross has bought back that authority and he has given it to every believer and uh, this authority right each believer has but from what we discussed earlier on today uh we realize that having the authority is one thing but if we don't understand it if we don't use it put it into practice it will never really work for us right yes yes shall yeah yeah sure uh in acts 19 chapter he talk about the sons of skeva yeah when they try to do what paul trying to do they won't that they won't successful because uh, first i mean first of all they won that well, well versed in the world or in the word and they didn't know how to use the authority properly so that's why i think you know you should have a proper understanding about the authority and then use it correct uh, so so that means i mean we all have authority not saying that we don't but we also uh, must be worthy or well must be well uh, well knowledgeable enough to use it sure um so um uh, shawn's point is the sons of skiva okay uh, they to some extent they tried using the authority yeah. it never really worked out no. but you know what the the major point in this acts 19 is the sons of skiva were not born again they did not belong to the kingdom of god see there are two kingdoms there's you we either we'll talk about it i think uh, in, in another two classes there are two kingdoms when we are born again we belong to the kingdom of light or uh, the kingdom of jesus but when we are not born again as far as what the bible says we come under the kingdom of darkness okay so that is the reason the demons they spoke to the sons of skiva they said jesus we know paul we know because they are all part of the kingdom of light you guys are still part of our kingdom and you're just using the principle what was the principle they were using they noticed paul was casting out demons in the name of jesus and the son those days uh, in in these times they were they were uh, there were uh, exorcists exorcists it was just their profession to cast out demons so when they saw that paul and others are using the name of jesus they just tried it basically but they were never part of the kingdom of jesus which is why the demons told them jesus we know paul we know who are you and they got beaten up so the point i'm making shawn is even the youngest child in the kingdom has the authority i know it sounds like god how can you how can you give authority if somebody is born again just one minute ago somebody got born again but even the youngest child in the kingdom has the authority that i'm talking about and that's the amazing part okay so yeah and another incident you can see in the time of jesus when jesus was alive mm -hmm. um the apostles uh, the apostles saw that a uh, man was chasing out uh, demons and that uh, then they immediately told that man to stop but and they told jesus about this jesus asked why are you stopping him don't stop him from doing that that's true and another reason why he did that is because he said if he's a part of us yeah. then you know don't stop him 
so basically he must have been a believer um you know in in christ so that's the reason jesus said don't stop him yeah okay. so yeah if you're part of the kingdom of god then the authority is valid for us okay like even a little child uh can actually rebuke and you can see that demons flee and the mighty things happen so yeah we can all use our authority authority is taken taken back mm authority is taken back so uh -huh. from the prophets mm yeah so um for example saul no saul he had the authority as a king uh but because of his disobedience towards god obviously you know david came on the scene later and uh, saul lost his authority so yeah that's something for us to remember samson yeah see but in both these instances also like if you look at it in the light of the new testament we don't see a place where god takes it back it doesn't work like that we can lose it or we can leave it so that that's how it is because uh, there is one scripture uh, romans 11:29 it says the gifts and the callings of god are irrevocable meaning when god gives it he never takes it back but if i am not you know uh, filled with faith i can give it up so it works like that yeah yes uh, even in the case of balam when oh. uh, you know god told him not to go with them mm. you know but uh, and uh, you know to go and put, i mean he couldn't put a curse on the israelites as the as the, as the king want as the enemy of the enemy kingdom wanted but uh, at that even at that point there is a authority to tell the prophecies wasn't taken away you still had that correct even though he was doing something that is against god that yeah. god warned him not to do so true so see god is uh, loving and long suffering his love is long suffering uh, so the gifts may function for some time but again we should not take it as oh anyway god is there and you know he is helping in the ministry why are the gifts still functioning uh, reason is the bible says that the gifts are for the benefit of all god gives it for the sake of the people not for the sake of the preacher okay so god is gracious that way that the gifts can still function but not for long before you know it uh you may not see god at work in your life if you are walking in disobedience so we have to be careful about these things okay all right i think we uh, uh already finished is there one more question yeah quickly we'll we'll take it up quickly can can devil steal our authority can devil steal our authority answer is no he can but he can make you and me he can manipulate us yeah he can just manipulate us i have the authority uh, all i i can use it all the time but if i agree with the devil then i you know i i'm in a dangerous place okay great so uh, let's pray now and uh, close off for this morning whoever has a mic vimal has a mic so please pray and uh, we'll wrap up thank you lord thank you for today's session lord jesus lord as we are study about authority which you gave us lord jesus lord help us help us to no more and we can stand in our authority lord jesus which you given us lord jesus lord i pray each and every one we are here to learn your word lord jesus lord open our wisdom and uh, give us wisdom and knowledge lord jesus and use us for your glory lord jesus thank you for this session thank you for nancy ma'am thank you for everything in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you vimal thank you everyone and we will meet again on friday okay so friday we'll have another class thank you bye for now